Yesterday we considered that God calls us all to find him. That is why he created us. It's what is called the vocation to holiness that each one of us has received. Tomorrow we will consider the vocation to marriage or to lay life as a lay faithful. And today we will say a few things about what is said or what is called the consecrated vocations. Consecrate a vocation to consecrated life, to a priest life, priesthood, religious life, missionary life, life of a special, special consecration. There are many different ways for it. And about that, I will put five questions, five questions about vocation. I will try to give also the answers. I'm not sure, but let us try it. The first is, what is vocation? What is? What is it? Vocation is a call, an invitation. God created me unique and unrepeatable. And when he did so, when God created me, he, we can say that he dreamed me. He has a dream. He has a plan. He has an image of my life. And he has the image of my life completed as a whole, like the complete product. Later he will develop it. But the important is to see that, that he has a dream for my life. And this is a plan of his that he proposes. He does not impose it. He presents it to me. A plan that he wants to share with me and he expects and desires that I will accept it. Knowing that it may happen that I don't accept it or I don't fulfill it. But God assumes the risk. God assumes the risk. Because even there he wants to let me free. Because remember that without freedom, without freedom there is no love. Without love there is no happiness. This is why always vocation is a matter of a call, is a matter of freedom, it's a matter of love. That's all. The important thing here is to understand that he, God, who created every cell of my being, is the one who knows the formula for my happiness. He is the only one who knows what will make me happy. Because he created me. He knows. He knows me. He knows what is what I need to be happy. And this plan is a plan for happiness that he had thought. This is what we call vocation. This vocation, the specific vocation for each person, sometimes is to imitate Jesus fulfilling the commandments, and sometimes is to imitate Jesus in a closer way, in a better way. This is what we call the consecrated vocation. Second then, to what is it a call? For what? This uh, vocation to consecrated life. As we said, is to imitate Jesus Christ and to follow him more closely. Yes, the consecrated vocation, any consecrated vocation, is a call to resemble Jesus in everything. It's like this plan of God wants that when God sees me, God sees the image of his son, of Jesus Christ. Then this is why consecrated life is a call to imitate Jesus in many things, even in the way of life, to live like Jesus, poor, chaste, obedient. Then it is not a call first to do something. Oh, I want to do something. I want to, to teach catechism. I want to... It's not a, 
Firstly, it's not mainly a call to do something. Oh, I, I, I like to travel, then I, I should be a missionary. Yes, it can be, it can be, but it's not at first this. It's not the point. The main point is imitating Jesus Christ. It's to be like someone and to be with him. And from there, then, to be sent by him. When Jesus called the apostles, the gospel says, he called them to be with him and then to send them for the people. And he called those he wanted. Then it is an invitation to seek God throughout our life, to learn how to love him above all things. And this learning how to love God above all things is something that it happens all along our life. When we follow the vocation, when we follow this call, is is this is with the because we we want, we try to learn how to love God. And it's not only turning away from bad things, it's not only that. To meet Jesus, to follow the vocation, means also emulating, sacrificing a lot of good things, very good things. For example, like having a family. Yes, my freedom, my goods, my money, my yes. He's sacrificing good things. Is to offer good things to the Lord, to renounce to them out of love. This is the essence of a vocation. You are my inheritance, O oh Lord. I don't want to know anything else. The third then point or question is, how is this call of vocation? How does God do it? How does it happen? God does it by means of an interior call, interior call. This does not mean an apparition or a voice. Oh, I heard a voice telling me what to do. Yes, sometimes it's something like that, or it can happen something like that, but it's not, uh, not most of the times it's not that. But it's God who makes me feel, who makes me think, who makes me discover that, well, perhaps he's calling me for something greater. It is always an invitation, as we have said. That is why sometimes it is very delicate, because God doesn't want to impose his will. He wants to invite, to call, and this is why many times it's so subtle, so delicate. Many times it's something that shows itself little by little. Like someone who wants to attract little by little. Sometimes God softens our heart. Because our heart sometimes is a little hard. He has to soften it and he does it through, I know, the psalm speaks of God open my ear. God opened my ear to listen, to be able to listen. And he does through some blow, a big conversion, a big cross in my life, a difficulty, a strong spiritual experience. I had a, a, spirit, a, a, a strong spiritual experience. Something happened. I saw something and whoop, I know what happened. Okay, it's God who is softening trying to make soft my heart. He's trying to open my ears to listen. The important thing here is to understand that God is the one who decides how and when to call. He's free to choose the way. I cannot tell him, you call me this way, or if you will call me, call me this way or call me for that, or we cannot do that with God. We cannot do that. I mean, it's God who decides how, when, why. 
I cannot tell God, if you don't send me an angel, I will not follow. Because he wouldn't. <laughs> he will not send that angel. That could be terrible. That could be like uh, trying to tempt God. He's the one who decides. He's free. He's God. To Sam, he shows it uh, very clearly as if he burst into the life and everything is clear and sometimes occasion is a matter of boom it's a light that no doubts no problems no uh, it's clear it's like a blow like he bursts into the life and there is no way to say it. but some other times some other times he tests if they respond well to the little things he's asking them to do then he's moving forward little by little and even to others to some others because he decides how to do it it's not that we can say this is the way for a vocation god is god and even to others he simply puts this possibility before them and asks them do you want to choose me do you want to follow me? It's up to you. Do you want? No? Only that, only that question. And the person will give an answer. A free, uh, absolutely, yes or no. If you want, you can choose to follow me. He does not always show his whole plan at the beginning. He shows this plan, this dream he has, little by little, all along our life, throughout our life. Sometimes at the beginning he uses very simple things to call. You know, like, for example, the desire to save my soul. I'm, I, I'm really concerned. I want to save my soul and I see that it's the best place to do it, the best way. Yes, it's good enough. He calls in Teresa de Jesus in that way. Later, he opened to her more and more and more. But uh, God is free to decide which are the ways, which are the reasons, how he shows at the beginning, how he does. Because he's a little by little attracting more, attracting more our hearts. It will remain an invitation until the last day of our life. I will always be able to say yes or to say no. And God will give the grace to say yes, always. If at some point, point someone says no, it doesn't mean that there was no vocation. It doesn't mean no. Simply, a person for a while said yes, and after a point, that person said no, and that's all. St. Thomas says that we cannot say that. For whom does God call? Those whom he calls, he does not call because they are better than others. Not at all. Not at all, we know. We who are religious, we know that we, <laughs> we are not being called because we are better. No, not at all. No. We are tempted to think the contrary. He calls those he wants. Finish. Period. He calls those he wants. And finish. St. Paul says that God chooses those who do not count in the world. Yes. Those who are worthless. So that it can be seen that the work is his. If you are called, it's not because you are better. If you are not called, it's not because you are worse. No. Simply, God calls those he wants. Why? God knows. God knows. For that very reason, he does not stop calling because we are miserable 
poor and worthy. Oh, Father, but it is something very high, very great. I can't aspire to something like that. Yes, it is something very great. But the one who makes it great is God himself, the same one who created you, the same one who gives you grace. Oh, Father, but I am not worthy. Others, yes, they are. They are able. They are worthy. They are... I am not worthy. Yes, it's true. You are not worthy. It's true. Because nobody is. No one is. No one. No one is prepared. No one is ready. No one is good enough. No. No one has reasons to tell God that he fulfills or meets the requirements. No. The only thing that counts is if it is what God wants, if it is his will. It's the only that counts. And God knows that. And the, no and the soul knows it too. No one else. Only God and the soul know if there is the goal. And finally, what to do? How to discover it? How to know if I am called or not? It's very simple. Examine your heart. Examine your heart. Because God may have planted his seed there. But examine your heart before God. Before God. Ask God. Pray. Pray a lot. Offer sacrifices. Ask for advice and seek help. Seek light. And for that, for example, the spiritual exercises are really a great mean, means to see better, to have more light. But what is uh, what have I to do? What must I do? Examine your heart before God. Ask him. But above all, do not fear. Fear does not come from God. Do not fear. This is the point. Because it doesn't come from God. Face it. Reject it. It's not coming from God. It's coming from the devil. Fear comes from the devil. Trust. Because, uh, little thing, why should you fear if you are asking your father to tell you what will you make you what will make you happy? You are asking your father to tell you what will make you happy. Why should you fear? And he will tell you. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you have to suffer for a while. Sometimes it is dark. But he never fails to give his grace to those who approach him with a humble heart, with a generous heart. If it is not your way, he will let you know. Sure, because he is your father. He knows. He will not deceive you. He will not deceive you. But trust. Do not fear because he's your father. And be honest, especially. Be honest. Be truth. God's plan for you is in God's heart. Throw yourself into his hands and into the hands of our Heavenly Mother, Mary Most Holy.